Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and welcome back. In the last few segments, uh, we, we discussed three important anthropometric uh, principles and uh, how we can use uh, applied statistics to, to design products using anthropometric principles. And we discussed that we either design for the minimum or for the maximum or design for a range. And in the case of designing for the minimum, we, we generally decide the lower percentile value, say the fifth percentile. And when designing for the maximum, we, we decide a higher percentile value, let's say 95th percentile. And for a range, we generally have these values. That is, we design for fifth to 95th percentile values. So the question is, why don't we design for, for the 100 percent population? So the answer is that would be the ideal case if we can do that, but that is generally not possible, either from cost point of view or maybe from usability or safety point of view. Uh, in this segment, we will specifically address the cost perspective. So let's suppose we are interested to decide the value of this uh, car interior, and that is in dimension <clears throat> one, so the height from top of the seat to the ceiling of the, of the car interior. So we call it uh, dimension one. So that is the product dimension. Then we have to identify the corresponding anthropometric variable. So that is the sitting height of the people who will be using this car. So we need data of the sitting height to decide uh, this height one. So let's suppose the mean uh, sitting height of males is 90 centimeters and standard deviation is five. question is what would be the value of this dimension one whether uh, it should be mean uh, sitting height that is 90 centimeter or some other percentile value. so let's try to answer this question using um, the concept of normal distribution and and corresponding z table so let's suppose that as an option A, we, we decide to have this uh, height uh, one to be equal to mean sitting height. So that was 90 centimeter. So question is, what percentage of people in this population would be able to use this product according to this dimension one? So answer is simple, that is 50%. So that means people in this population who have a sitting height greater than 90 centimeter won't be able to actually sit in this car. So this interior with respect to this dimension will be unfit for about 50% of the population. So that is actually uh, this area to the left of the mean. So these are the people for which this product will be will be okay and for the rest of the 50 percent uh, on the right of this uh, this uh, mean this product won't be uh, won't be fit to use so as an option b we increase this height and let's suppose we have it equal to mu plus one sigma so standard deviation was five centimeters so this height becomes 95 centimeters so we, we have added one standard deviation value that is five centimeters to the mean of 90 centimeters. So it, it has become 95. In this case, we will be able to accommodate about 84% people in this population. So that is an increase of uh, about 34%. So that is an increase of about 34%. So we, we have added this area as well. So this total area actually to the left of this one sigma is, is 84%. So as a whole, uh, that is 84%. So uh, that is the case B. So that is area B. So let's suppose we further increase this height 
one uh, according to one sigma and uh, that becomes 100 centimeters so uh, against two sigma we have area under the curve equal to almost 97.7% so let's let's approximately write it to be 98%. So further 14% people are accommodated. So this area actually, this area is 14%, but this total area under the curve will be 98%. So let's call it C. And this area actually, this one, this much was 34%. And between one sigma and two sigma is about, about 14%, this one. <clears throat> so if we move one step ahead and we increase this, uh, Height further five centimeters, and let's make it one zero five centimeters. So we have actually now accommodated about ninety nine point eight seven percent. That is, of course, not exactly hundred percent, but just for the sake of understanding the concept, we we assume it to be equal to hundred percent. So we have further accommodated 2% people in the population. This, this area, this much, is 2%. So what is the idea? What is the conclusion? So by increasing the height by 5%, from 90 to 95, a larger percentage of uh, population was accommodated. That was 34%. But for the same increase of 5%, from 95 to 100%, a much smaller percentage, that is just 14% um, people in the population were accommodated. And for further increase of 5%, just 2% people in the population were accommodated. So for the same change, uh, theoretically, suppose we are incurring the same cost, uh, but, uh, but the, the percentage of population that we are accommodating is increase, is decreasing and decreasing further and decreasing further. So that, that is actually the point. So, we'll, so we may decide to, to stop somewhere over here, for example, and initially ignore these 2% people. And let's suppose we, we decide to accommodate 98% of people and decide this side one to be according to 98th percentile. And then we accommodate the remaining 2% using some, some other principles. So in this case, we were using the principle of designing for, for the extremes, that is the higher percentile of value. So suppose 98 percentile, but we can accommodate the remaining two using some other principles, say adjustability. So we can have an adjustability option, for example, to, to, to lower the seat so that these remaining 2% can also be accommodated because these 2% are very small percentage of the total population and, and uh, who, who might be using our, our car in this case. So that is sometimes called the point of diminishing returns. For the same change in the product design, we will be receiving uh, less and less return. Second important point is that we are increasing this height 5% in each case. So that will also impact the overall design of this car. So this height of interior depends upon other factors as well. So we, we, have, we will have to make the change in those dimensions as well. And for example, if we, if we increase this height, so this dimension of this car front will also increase. So that will increase the resistance because of air. So that may ultimately impact the fuel economy of the car as well. So the basic conclusion is that 
when using anthropometric data, the selection of suitable cutoff point depends upon the consequences of anthropometric mismatch. So, the anthropometric mismatch and the cost of designing for a wide range of uh, people. So, in this case, the mismatch were those 2% people. So, we could accommodate them using some, some adjustability options. But if we, we try to accommodate those 2% as well, that might have uh, adversely affected the design of our, our car and some, some other financial aspects as well. So one of the ergonomists most important task is to predict and evaluate what mismatches are going to be like. So it is not normally sufficient only to specify the required dimensions using some principles without considering other aspects such as usability and misuse. So that is ultimate conclusion. So we are not going to sort of blindly apply the fifth or 95th percentile rule and not considering the practical implications of that principles, especially from usability, safety, and cost perspectives. So I hope this idea of applying the data to design in anthropometric design uh, is, is clear. And basic takeaway is that we, we can uh, not only, uh, we, we not only need the principles, but we also need the practical implications of applying those principles. And here we just took the example of uh, the height of car interior, but you can think for other uh, dimensions like, for example, this uh, height of the seat or, or the depth or width or other variables and see how this principle and these uh, these practical considerations apply those apply to those dimensions as well. Thank you very much.